Good evening and welcome to GFC Visions Growing in Friendship with Christ. Sorry to say that uh, this day is, is coming to an end and uh, this video it may not get to you on the 14th of November, but um, today is, is the 14th of November and here in Dublin and Ireland we celebrate the feast of, a, uh, of one of the co-patrons of, of this diocese. A uh, bishop who lived in the 12th century. His name was Saint Lawrence O'Toole, and uh, he's the co-patron of Dublin, along with Saint Kevin of Glendalough. I have a very extensive biography of him, which I'd like to share with you because uh, he was a very fascinating man who uh, lived a very, very saintly life, and uh, I think it's. Since he is a native of, of uh, Dublin, he was actually born in County Kildare, but since he, he spent many years uh, shepherding the church in Dublin and, and uh, also spent time uh, as the abbot of Glendalough, uh, he's a man who, who would be especially beloved by, by the, the people in this area. So um, I'd like to begin with a hymn. It's called, I Sing the Mighty Power of God. I have two verses of this hymn which I'd like to share with you. It's a lovely hymn. I sing the mighty power of God That made the mountains rise That spread the flowing seas abroad Built the lofty skies Lord, how your wonders are displayed Where'er I turn my eye If I survey the ground I tread Or gaze upon the sky There's not a plant or flower below But makes your glory Clouds arise and tempests blow by order from your throne. While all that borrows life from you is ever in your care, and everywhere that man can be, you got our presence. As I said earlier, uh, I have a very extensive bi biographical sketch of St. Lawrence O'Toole, or Lorcan O'Toole, uh, as he might be known, uh, his, his first name, uh, Lorcan in, in the Gaelic. Let, let me read it out to you because um, I, I think you might find it interesting and uh, hopefully my reading it won't, uh, won't make it harder for you to connect with it, you know, because I did spend a good bit of time uh, studying his life over the last 16 years since I've been in Dublin, I've had the opportunity to visit Glendalough about five times and uh, try to learn a bit about the spirit of St. Lawrence O'Toole. And uh, I think uh, he has uh, been interceding for me uh, since I've been living in this city, and I, I feel the power of his prayers. So let's, uh, let's read a little bit about him. St. Lawrence O'Toole uh, was born in uh, the year 1128, and he died in the year 1180. And he was the Archbishop of Dublin during the time of the Norman invasion. He played a major role in the reform of the Irish Church, and he mediated between several parties during and after the Norman invasion. And he was canonized by Pope Honorius III in the year 1225. So that's some general information about him. St. Lawrence or Lorcan was born in a place called Kilkia in County Kildare, and he was the youngest of four sons of King Muradach. By the time of his birth, King Muradach was subordinate to, to the new overkings in South Leinster. And the king from 1126 was, was a man named Dermot McMurrow. At the age of 10, 
Lorcan was sent to King Dermot as a hostage for his father. But due to some rifts between the two kings, uh, Lawrence was imprisoned for two years in extreme austerity, barely given enough to survive. Due to the kind intercession of the abbot of Glendalough, uh, amenable relationships were restored between the two kings. One result of, of his confinement was the strengthening of Lorcan's wish to enter religious life. And the story goes that when King Muradoc arrived at Glendalock for Lorcan, he, he stated that he would draw lots to have one of his sons made a priest, at which Lorcan laughed as he had long thought of becoming a priest himself. So no lots were drawn and Lorcan remained at Glendalock under the care of the abbey there. In time, he rose to become the abbot of Glendalock at the age of 26 in the year 1154. He was a man of great religious reform, and he desired that the Irish church more clearly reflect the universal church, thus helping to strengthen the bonds between the Irish church and Rome. As the abbot, he began a spiritual renewal program among the monks of the abbey, bringing Glendalock more in line with the French style abbeys of continental Europe. To aid him in the process, he invited the canons of St. Augustine to join the abbey and to promote his reform. And in fact, he himself became a member of the Augustinian order. Sadly, a severe famine ravaged the land during the first several months of his tenure. Theft and looting was rampant, even undertaken by noblemen. In an early 13th century biography called The Life of St. Lorcan, it is said that he protected his monastic community through his devout prayer, austere fasting, and his, his miraculous curse and the threat of excommunication. He was held in high regard by both the community at Glendalough and its secular neighbors for his obvious sanctity and his charity to the poor. At the age of 34, following the death of the Archbishop Gregory in the year 1162, he was elected the Archbishop of Dublin, and he was consecrated by Gelasius, then the Archbishop of Armagh, and who was the successor of St. Malachy. As Archbishop of Dublin, he played a prominent part in the Irish Church Reform Movement of the 12th century, rebuilding several parish churches and emphasizing the use of Gregorian chant in the liturgy. He laid the foundation stone for the Cathedral of the Holy Trinity, which is the Christ Church Cathedral. And to assist in the spiritual formation of both the clergy and the laity of the, di of the diocese, he invited the Augustinian monks to become part of the cathedral chapter. Though the city was in the midst of an economic boom, there was appalling poverty at the time as well, and Lorcan stretched out his hand to care for the poor and the neglected, feeding many of the city's poor in his home. He also established care centers for children who had been abandoned by their parents or orphaned in the city. When on retreat, the bishop often returned to Glendalough, but he refused to stay in the monastery preferring to pray in solitude in a small cave between a rock and the upper lake, which was used by St. Kevin, and hence it is referred to as St. Kevin's bed. In the latter half of the 12th century, there were various disputes among the Irish kings. Dear, Dermot uh, McMurrow was, was deposed as the King of Leinster in the year 1166. Exiled and with a half-hearted promise of help from Hen King Henry II of England, Dermid returned to Ireland with a group of penniless Norman, Flemish, and Welsh allies to help him to regain his kingdom. Though Dublin was a walled city, the, cit the citizens were terrified by these Norman knights and other men-in-arms, and there were many stories being told of their fierceness and their cruelty. The archbishop's house thus became besieged by people begging him to save them from these knights 
and to make a treaty of, with the Anglo-Normans. Lorcan went out to the foreigners' camp, and while he appealed to them, two of the Norman knights made a breach in the city wall and entered the streets, burning several houses and killing unarmed people. When he heard of the massacre, Lorcan hurried back to Dublin and succeeded in stopping the slaughter. The last years of his life were defined by these types of interventions as a mediator in various power struggles in the Dublin area. He became renowned throughout Ireland and abroad as a true peacemaker. No greater tribute can be paid to him than the fact that he was the one man in all of Ireland whom everybody trusted. The Irish, Vikings, the Normans, rich and poor alike, all had great respect for him as a man of total honor and integrity. Archbishop Lorcan left Ireland in 1179 to attend the Third Lateran Council in Rome, and he was accompanied by five other Irish bishops. From, Alexander, from Pope Alexander III, he received a papal bull confirming the rights and privileges of the See of Dublin. Alexander also named him as a papal legate. On his return to Ireland, he kept up the pace of the reform to such an extent that as many as 150 clerics were withdrawn from their offices for various abuses, and they were sent to Rome. The saint was described as tall and graceful in appearance. He was well known for his ascetical practices. He wore a hair shirt. He never ate meat. He fasted every Friday on bread and water. In contrast to this, when he entertained others, his guests lacked for nothing, while he drank water colored to look like wine, so as not to spoil their feasting. Each Lent he returned to Glendalough to make a forty days retreat in St. Kevin's Bed, a cave on a precipice overlooking the upper lake. In 1180, uh, Archbishop uh, Lawrence left Ireland for the last time taking with him a son of the High King, Rory O'Connor, as a hostage for Henry II. He meant to admonish King Henry for infringements against uh, King O'Connor, contrary to the Treaty of Windsor, which was enacted in 1175, which established various rights for the two kings. He landed in Normandy due to a closure of English ports at a cove which was named after him. Saint Laurent. While there he fell ill and he was brought to the Abbey of Saint Victor at a place called e EU. Mortally ill, it was suggested to him that he should make up his will, to which he replied, quote, God knows I have not a penny under the sun to leave to anyone. His last thoughts were of his people in Dublin. Quote, Alas, you poor people, what will you do now? Who will take care of you in your trouble? Who will help you? He died at U, Normandy, on this day in the year 1180 and was buried there. His heart is enshrined in a special reliquary, which was recently renovated in Christ Church Cathedral. And for the past four of the past five years, I've been blessed to walk the Wicklow Way on the eve of his feast uh, from Glendalough to, to Dublin. And I've celebrated the Vespers or Evensong with, uh, with Dean Dermot and with the canon there at, uh, at the Christ Church. Her name is Abigail Sines. For four of the last five years, myself and two others have walked this Wicklow Way and celebrated the Vespers on the Feast of St. Lawrence O'Toole in Christ Church Cathedral. So um, we'll say a decade of the Rosary now and ask St. Lawrence O'Toole to intercede for the church in Dublin and Ireland and that it might be renewed in its spirit of prayer and its, its courageous witness to, to the gospel values of Jesus Christ. We'll say the, the proclamation of the kingdom, the third mystery of light. In the name of the Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hail Mary, Full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners now and at the hour of death. Amen. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. O Mary, conceive without sin, pray for us who have recourse to thee. Our Lady of Knock, pray for us. St. Patrick, St. Bridget, St. Columba, and St. Lawrence O'Toole, pray for us. St. Michael, Gabriel, Raphael, and all you holy angels of God, pray for us. Laudate Domino, Laudate Domino, Omnes Gentes, Alleluia. Laudate Domino, Laudate Thank you for watching GFC Visions Growing in Friendship with Christ. I hope you have a good weekend and may God bless and protect you always. Amen.